I made a game in 48 hours for Ludum Dare 53, and this is how it went. So if you don't know what Ludum Dare is, it's basically one of the biggest game jams in the whole world. Every six months or so, developers all over the world come together to make a game following a theme in the short time of two days, with all original ideas, art, and programming. And that's exactly what I did. Well, kinda? Wait, wait, Wh what do you mean kinda? So here's the thing, the game jam is taking place between April 28th to May 1st, and I'm gonna be out of town during that time. So I'm essentially gonna do my own two day jam in advance so I can still kinda participate. But, but, but what theme are you gonna use then, huh? You're not gonna know the theme. So in order for me to have a theme, I had the brilliant idea of taking all the previous Ludum Dare themes and randomizing them to find my true theme for this jam. I just needed to give this wheel a spin and we're golden. Wait. Um, can, can I spin the wheel? Sure you can, mysterious viewer. Tiny, Tiny world. world! So now that the rules are set for this jam, let's get started. Day one, I wake up bright and early with a theme swimming in my mind. Before I get started developing, I need to come up with a game idea. Because it's a tiny world, I started thinking of a ship in the bottle. And what do ship and bottles have? Sand and water. So I started thinking of a sandy ocean theme. As for gameplay, I ended up fusing together this kind of Stardew Valley Minecraft kind of gameplay loop. I'm thinking that the player will spawn on an island with a tree. And then by collecting resources, they can expand the map and grow the island by feeding it those resources. And by doing so, the island will unlock new resources and areas for the player to explore and feed to keep growing the island further and further, going from a tiny world to a big one. I hop in Unity and start off with placing an ocean, island, and a player that can move in any direction. And you know what they say, where there's a tree, there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a tree. So let's add a tree to the game. I hopped on Photoshop and created a tree sprite and placed it in the scene. I want the player to be able to mine the tree. So I took my attacking script from my banana boxer game, check out the video by the way, and repurposed it to damage objects. Created a pickup sprite and a UI counter for the player resources. Full credits for Coco Code for the UI stuff, so go give them a kiss. Now the player can mine trees and collect wood. I also added a regrowing mechanic so that the tree can be ready to collect again in a matter of seconds. Oh yeah, I added a little camera shake effect to give that crispy crunchy game feel. Oh yeah. Now it's time for me to implement the main mechanic of this game to take it from a tiny world to a big world. I know that I made this in probably the worst possible way and veteran programmers would definitely cry <laughs> if they saw my programming approach to this, but it doesn't matter because I'm strong and independent and can make my own choices, guys. Well, would you look at that? It's working fantastically. This game's looking a little flat though. So I add some animations to the tree and pickups to give it that funky bounce, you know? <laughs> Now with these new and improved animations, look how crisp that is. And with that finished, I'm really tired. So I'm just gonna go to bed and continue tomorrow. Good night, guys. Day two, I wake up bright and early for a day of pain and programming. I don't know about you guys, but between us, I'm kind of tired of seeing this square. So I went on to make up character in Photoshop. I didn't really have an idea for it. I kind of just drew something that fit the game style well. well. We'll call him George. I made him full animations for all movement directions but I'm not exactly sure how to do that in Unity, so for now I'm just gonna leave it to an idle bounce. Upon playtesting further, the hitting object system is kind of whack because it, it's not really precision accurate, it just attacks on a radius around you, and it uses an awkward button. So I reworked it so now you could attack only facing the mouse direction, and using the mouse click so it has a much better game feel. I also added a little slash animation so now you can feel the impact better and know which direction you're attacking. Next, I hopped on Photoshop and made an axe for the player to hold for now it's i'm it's not it's kind of lame i'm not gonna lie it doesn't really do anything but with time you know with time we'll add different tools and stuff to the game and why is that because i'm adding rocks to the game because variety i i guess man this game blows rocks work the same way as trees except you get stone instead of wood that that's that's it really there's there's nothing else to it oh yeah and i, I added a bridge that doesn't really look that good but variety you know you can't just have the island you gotta have bridge and stuff too. And finally, we need an end point to this game. What does that bridge lead to exactly? It leads to a boat. The players can repair the boat and escape the world. And let's please have a moment of silence for my pixel art skills. 
and wait wait that's it oh time is up i didn't even have time to add like sound effects or a main menu or actual like stuff to my game but at least we have kind of a full game here with a full loop so thanks for sticking around and seeing the whole video and i'd also love to see your guys ludum dare submissions if you participated of course with that being said i'll see you on the next video